My name is Deanna Polk. I'm an RN with Public Health Nursing Certification and a Master's of Science in Homeland Security with a specialization in science and technology. I'm also all but thesis for a Master's of Science in Public Health for Global Emergency Preparedness and Response. Um, I was a disaster medical assistance team nurse, uh, part of the Federal Response for Disasters in the United States and its territories. and. Um, my thesis was on civilian military collaboration for humanitarian assistance and disaster response. I uh, was charged with forming the first decontamination response team at Scripps La Jolla Hospital in 2002, um, which entailed me taking hazmat operational level training. There's a, different levels of training in hazmat. You have awareness, operational, and then beyond that. Um, so it's quite extensive. Uh, training in that regard. I've been involved in international disaster response um, and designing uh, disaster exercises and uh, trying to think of, I've worked with the city, the county, the state, and federal levels. So I've worked with all of the jurisdictions within San Diego County on up to a global level. Um, working from both a homeland security perspective but also from a public health, global health perspective. Uh, and my focus is on collaboration, uh, interagency collaboration, um, civ mil civilian military collaboration, because when a disaster hits, and it's not a matter of if, but when one does, um, what hits us here will impact, can impact you know, the other side of the globe as well. So we need to form relationships with people outside of our comfort zone and learn what each other does. So that's been the focus of my work for the last 14 years. My last position uh, was the, as I was the emergency preparedness coordinator for the Council of Community Clinics, which was about a hundred, it's about a hundred clinics located throughout San Diego, Imperial, and Riverside counties. Budget cuts um, happened and I got laid off. During that time, we had what we call a songs alert. Part of my responsibility in that position was to carry a pager, an emergency phone, and I carried it with me 24 hours a day, seven days a week, so that if something happened, I would go through part of the response, which would be to report to the Medical Operations Center, which is part of the county's Emergency Operations Center, which is our um, part of our integrative response to whatever uh, hazard or disaster. And it was a songs alert, yeah. San Onofre Nuclear Generation um, Station. So I hear songs and I immediately think, you know, hopefully it's just an error, but the other is Three Mile Island. I remember how I felt. I was driving near San Onofre when I heard the radio news about Three Mile Island. Nuclear safety has been uh, a focus of mine throughout my life, basically, since I became uh, aware of our society. And it's always been a balance of uh, safety versus economics. Um, I've never been real thrilled with the safety systems we've had in place. Uh, even as a teenager, I saw holes in it. Um, I was concerned about San Onofre when my son was in diapers, and I actually took him there. He's now 38 years old, so I've been aware of the risks associated with this one particular plant and others across the country for most of my adult life. In January of 2012, when the, we had the alert that there was um, something awry at the San Onofre Nuclear Generation Station, I um, checked in and was told I didn't need to go to the Medical Operations Center, that it was under control. So part of my responsibility is going to the emergency management meetings. Uh, we have on several levels, the Hospital Preparedness Committee, um, the Public Health meetings, the Hospital uh, Unified Disaster uh, meetings, and um, the Office of Emergency Services meeting. 
where all the different agencies meet and report. Uh, when I heard that they shut down San Onofre, I knew that was serious because they don't do that lightly. It's very expensive. Um, and the fact that they've had it shut down for so long um, has given me great pause. Um, now in light of the horrors of Fukushima, uh, we can't take anything lightly. And so that's why I've decided to, to speak out just to what I know about as far as emergency preparedness in relation to a radiological event in San Diego and Orange Counties. But my expertise is within San Diego County. From a national security standpoint, um, we've got a nuclear generating generation station that has some issues with it. It's been admitted it's got problems. It's shut down right now. And we've got it located in the vicinity of thousands of Marine Corps troops and families. Um, if something happened, some of my concerns with uh, San Onofre right now is the fact that it was built on earthquake faults and there are other earthquake faults offshore that they're still trying to map. Uh, some of these faults are known as thrust faults, and it's been said to build to, to withstand those. But there is talk of a possible subduction fault off the coast. And if that, that's the type of fault where the plates, one would move under another and cause, you know, the type of flow for a tsunami, a displacement for a tsunami type of way. Generally, we're not worried that much about it here in San Diego, but the plant is located right on the water's edge in proximity to several earthquake zones. Uh, and with the swarm of earthquake activity we've had in Southern California the past couple of years, um, that gives me concern. Uh, I have concern you know, geologically, but also from a national security perspective, uh, San Onofre is located near a major highway. Um, we have thousands of Marine Corps troops that are needed uh, within a few miles of the plant itself. Um, the fact that we have Mexico to the south, and if something happened, um, you know, we've We've got an international border to deal with. We've got military bases to deal with, not to mention a hugely diverse civilian population. And we have some of the most diverse population of any anywhere in the country with the amount of refugees that we have, uh, farm workers, and these people, English is not their first language. So I worry about emergency preparedness getting out to the average person and having, you know, do they know what to do and how safe they are. We've got populations from Burma, Afghanistan, Iran, Iraq, um, African nations, several African nations, that we do not have the funding, have not had the funding to get the education out in all of these languages. That's just one human aspect of what we're dealing with. In the matter of evacuation, we have one route north, basically, and one route east. And to the south, we have um, an independent you know, country that has a secure border. So with, radio, with the way San Onofre is located, our prevailing winds are onshore. So a release with the onshore winds would blow that radiation, most likely, up toward the mountains. So between the mountains and the coast, we've got millions of people we need to deal with and not a way to evacuate them, you know, in a timely manner because the radiation, you know, spreads so quickly. So those are some of my concerns when the NRC is talking about their risk assessment being done. They're only mandated to do 10 miles around their facility. Um, and when they're asked about evacuation plans and response, they say, oh, we have an integrated response. Well, true. We do have uh, San Diego County and Orange County have got some of the best uh, collaborative 
uh, responses due to the fact that we've had so many fires in the past several years. We've learned how to work together. However, we do not have the money for detection uh, equipment at our hospitals. And with HRSA funding being um, eliminated, basically, our hospitals do not have the money to keep ongoing staff trained. So yes, our hospitals have, you know, have done a great job with learning about how to respond and how to protect the hospitals. But I wonder, like, because of the way our response is, if something happens, it goes to the emergency operations center, and from there it goes out to the medical operations center. From there they notify the emergency preparedness coordinators at the hospital. That takes time. And if those people aren't available, who do they have to back them up? And facilities may say, oh yes, we have a team, we have people trained, but do you have enough people trained? Do you have people trained at night? Do you, does your security, your, your maintenance workers, your nutrition workers, the people that are going to be there when all of the managers are gone, do they know what to do? And most likely, I can tell you, is no, they do not, because the hospitals are strapped for funding as it is, and they have to deal with what their preeminent thing is disease and healing people. And like I said, they've done a wonderful job. But when it comes to radiological, we are not prepared. Um, none of the clinics that people would go to have training in radiological. Yes, we do for flood, fire, and earthquakes, but radiological, we do not have. Everyone re refers to what we call hazmat. That's the fallback. Everybody says, let's call hazmat. We don't have enough people hazmat trained. And in a response, you need firefighters, you need police officers, you need sheriffs, and because of road closures or evacuation assistance, um, have these people been trained in radiological responses? And I can tell you, no. Uh, and that, to me, poses a threat. If something did happen at, at uh, San Onofre, and we did have a large release, we could become economically a dead zone. Uh, businesses would leave. Um, I think about the, the problems you have in evacuation with international travelers, with students whose parents don't live here. Um, you've got all these agencies that have to get involved in, the State Department and other uh, interstate agencies, and it becomes quite complex in trying to evacuate uh, you know, a, a, an area such as San Diego that has become so diversified and so global. Um, also the effects on the ocean and with our currents and where that radiation would go from there. So um, for the cost, the amount of electricity that this plant is providing us, it's not cost effective. The $900 million that Edison has spent on these failed steam generators could have been put for um, really boosting up our emergency preparedness. Um, I just think it's time for it to be decommissioned. Um, uh, from a terrorist perspective, I don't even want to give you the details on, on what I uh, see as risks, but there are risks there. Outside of that 10 miles that the NRC is, has jurisdiction for, the rest is FEMA. So people need to start asking FEMA what they have, if they have what they have for preparation in the area. Um, and, you know, down to details, down, down to you go out of your house, where would you go? What would you do if, if you heard there was a release? Um, my concern is also what we call the worried well, overwhelming our hospitals. Um, even if it wasn't a valid release, if someone hears there's a false alarm, hospitals, and people immediately go to hospitals or their clinics. and that right there can shut us down. If there's another emergency going, say there's a gas line that's ruptured. You know, with our aging infrastructure, we've got gas lines that go right by there, all the way down the coast. Um, 
we've got uh, a number of things, you know, within San Diego County with the fire flood that could impact uh, the ability for San Onofre to respond safely. The power outage in uh, September of last year uh, gave us a real wake-up call on how it affected our water pumps. You know, no electricity, the water pumps go down. So what kind of plans and redundancy do they have in place to ensure that doesn't happen? Um, we still have more work to do before we can ever declare this a safe nuclear genera generating station. So. Why did, you, why did you speak out so passionately at the um, meeting the other night? Um, I was amazed how Edison, number one, the venue they chose uh, was the St. Regis and the fact that they didn't let the media on the grounds, they had the media all on the outside and I used to work for the media too and I know they must have been chomping at the bit. But when I saw the bus loads of Edison and San Onofre workers bust in, I thought, oh my goodness, they're, they're really trying to stack the deck here. And when I saw other people, uh, nuclear physicists and other members of the community, council members, standing up and taking a stance, I thought, you know, the, I do have some knowledge about emergency preparedness and threats and risk in this county. Um, it's my passion and um, we can't afford to hide the facts. That's what will come and bite us in the end. I really believe, um, I love where we live. I, that's what, one reason I got a master's in Homeland Security, but I like to look at it as threats from not just some, quote, terrorist, but we have to look at what are really economic threats. If we've got some people that are using this for political means, um, I don't care what side of the fence you're on, my side is safety. My side is for the human being that is living in proximity to this threat. And if it can be mitigated, it should be. And by mitigation, if we cannot make that a safe plan, it needs to be decommissioned. And so I know there's some people that might be unhappy with me speaking out, and that's, you know, especially being out of work and laid off right now, it's, it, it's challenging to, to really speak your truth. But um, I, I've lived this uh, discipline for, you know, the last several years, and um, I don't want to see something like this happen, you know, happen in Fukushima, happen here. It's, uh, it would affect the whole country. If something happened at San Onofre, to me, it would affect the security of our whole nation. So we need to look at our, our national security from an internal perspective, infrastructure perspective, economic perspective, environmental perspective, um, and not just some political entities trying to do us harm. We need to find out what our weaknesses are and we need to mitigate those risks. So what would you say if you had the ear of, the, uh, of McFarland and the, uh, the, of the rest of the uh, commissioners? NRC commissioners. Um, Why need they pay attention to California and San Onofre? I think they have a lot of pressure. I, I would like to just speak to them and ask, see if they could answer some of my questions, you know, who I posed about the gaps in our emergency preparedness and response. I would um, ask them how they would address that because their fallback is we have an integrated response. And so we have. Um, well, FEMA will have to ask, answer that question, or DHS will have to answer that question. It's not our jurisdiction. This is what I'm talking, we, we have a problem in this country with what we call stove piping, where each agency has, you know, their chain of command, and we're trying to break through that in emergency response, and have, and we've done such great progress. But we need to look at the reality and look at the economic cost because 
the economic threat to us is just as important to me. Well, now uh, the, the radiological is much more important, but there is a huge economic threat here, and this country cannot afford that right now. We need that money that they're wasting on outdated power plants to shore up our police, our fire, um, not to mention you know, the teachers and such, but just in a response, uh, we don't have nearly enough police officers for, uh, San Diego doesn't, not for the FBI is determined we need about 3,000 for a city sitting on the border here uh, with the international threats that we have and all the, the different issues we have. We have maybe, we have less than half of that. So for me, it's a matter when you look at the whole picture instead of your particular um, bailiwick. So the NRC needs to take a look at these other agencies and they need to, to really say, can we plug these holes? Can we assure the public that yes, we have adequate personnel trained to deal with this. We have ways of protecting them. And I don't believe they can answer yes to, any, to all of those. So um, I know they do a great job. Um, and, but they've had a lot of pressure from economic um, sources to, uh, with the threatening us with, we need this for our, our electrical grid and our, our electrical needs. When we look at countries like Germany and Spain that are now using, you know, half of their energy needs are provided by solar. San Diego County has maybe 2% of their roofs solar. There's been a big fight against solar power here for a long time. And it's time to get over that and uh, look at what's good for the country. And we need to look at alternative, maybe break it down into smaller increments to where we can have office buildings powered separately, such as Google's using with their, their uh, hydrocell technology, powering their office buildings using much less energy. Um, we need to get a look over the political uh, divisions on this and look at what's really good for um, our future. Do you think that the 10 mile weight radius uh, evacuation area is adequate? No, that's ridiculous. Well, yeah, can you say that? I'm sorry. We won't hear. Oh, okay. We're going to be cutting our. When the NRC talks about a 10 mile evacuation radius, that to me is, is laughable. It's uh, not funny, but it's um, anyone in response knows that's just. Um, beyond ridiculous, um, especially with the winds, the, as I'd mentioned before, uh, it's, it, it will affect a lot more than a 10 mile radius. The wind patterns in San Diego County, mostly they're onshore, but they can, they can switch and you can switch, have Santa Ana winds come in. So you also have the mountains that, that channel the winds in a, through the canyons and such. So you can't uh, say with certainty that it's going to stay with that radiation is going to stay within a 10 mile radius. That's just, that's to me ridiculous. But that's their mandated jurisdiction. So that's what they speak to. We need to go beyond that, as I stated, and look at it from a whole security standpoint for the whole community. And that means, you know, our, our response, our economics, um, our transportation. If, if somebody hears there's a 10 mile evacuation radius, there's going to be panic. It's going to affect, and with social media these days, it'll be up there before the responders will be able to get to their stations and uh, get prepared for what they can prepare for. Um, that's why the number of 10 mile radius is just to me ridiculous. Uh, I understand that's where they get it from. They had to find some kind of jurisdiction, and, uh, but that's not reality. That's just not reality. When you're a responder and you're dealing with radiological, we're looking at, oh my goodness, where, what direction, do we know what direction the wind is coming from? Where do we set up our tent? How do you collect the water? How do you keep the contaminated water into, going into the sewer system? How do you detect who's irradiated, who's not? 
who's exposed, who isn't. Where do you start that process? At the at the beginning of your um, the grounds of your facility or at the emergency room door? There are a lot of unanswered questions, and this is what the public doesn't know. Different types of radiation. What gets me is people talk about, oh, well, we pass out iodine pills. We have a plan to pass out iodine pills. That only affects the thyroid. <laughs> There's a lot more to the human body that's affected by radiation than just the thyroid. So, and there's different types of radiation. And if it's in the air, the most, it, it, and you breathe it in or ingest it, that's the big danger. So I was a radiation oncology nurse before I uh, got into emergency preparedness and response. So I know the effects of just one type of radiation on the skin and the burns, dealing with people with breast cancer and other types of cancer where we used uh, radiation, you know, to successfully to treat it. Um, but within, if you if you ingest, depending on what type of radiation, there's different types. There's alpha radiation, there's beta rays. There's, and I'm not going to go into all the different uh, types right now and what they do. One of my concerns with um, a radiation release uh, of a moderate or a large scale in San Diego County is we have a lot of farms in the area. We grow a lot of tomatoes, lettuce, a lot of produce. Uh, if people aren't aware, you know, and they ingest that, or you breathe it in, it's pretty bad. Uh, what radiation, certain types of radiation does is blisters your skin. Um, it actually can make your skin burn and fall off. Um, you can you have vomiting, uh, there's all kinds of uh, horrific symptoms that, that go into this, but um, it's invisible. You can't see it, you can't taste it, you can't smell it. Most of it, if you're, you know, if, if, if it's not breathed in, if you're just exposed to radiation, a lot of it can be, you can be decontaminated by taking off your clothes and, and showering, but that radiation is going somewhere. So whoever's doing that decontamination is supposed to have a closed system so it doesn't enter the, um, our water tables, our, our streams, our oceans, uh, and they don't have, they do not have that uh, addressed adequately at this point for all the facilities that might be affected. Um, Long-term health concerns of radiation in an area, we're starting to see mutations of insects in uh, Fukushima. I'm following some uh, reports of radiation in the food source system there. Uh, we've had bluefin tuna caught off our coast that have shown radiation because of their, their pattern, of sw their migration pattern from uh, Japan over to the West Coast. So it doesn't just happen within a 10 mile radius. You know, it affects a radiation release can go anywhere and will go everywhere um, unless it's properly uh, responded to. And as I said, I don't believe we have the means to do that at this point. I know when I was working with the hospital decontamination response team, we had grave concerns about a radiological event because we had to figure out wind direction, uh, weather, uh, location of the decontamination tents, how we were going to capture the water that would be uh, used to decontaminate people, uh, concerns of language barriers. Uh, people that are um, disabled, the elderly, uh, nursing homes, there's a lot of uh, things that we haven't been able to answer yet from a response standpoint. Uh, so yes, we do have teams. Yes, we do have people prepared a lot better than we were before, but for a radiological event, I do not feel comfortable with um, the NRC saying that, oh, we have an integrated response. It's um, we do not have the equipment or the training countywide to respond to a big event.